What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, your host of the Two Growls, One Roar podcast. Back with your preview of the Carolina Panthers and the Green Bay Packers. I did something just now. I recorded like 10 minutes of this show and I messed up. I messed up so bad that I had to stop the show. But the reason I had to stop the show and start over and just laugh at myself and I should have kept it in the show. I should have just saved it and rolled with it because way back when, I guess it's earlier in this season, there were a few pressers where Frank Reich comes in and he did it twice. And he tried to say a hard fault win or just hard fault, whatever it was. But he comes out and says hard fart. And I kind of gave him a little bit of grief. Like if you don't listen to every presser, you're not, you would have never known that was a thing. But I, I knew because I listened to everyone and I thought it was hilarious. I sent it around. Sure enough, here I am trying to say hard fault. And I say hard fart as I'm recording this. And I was like, all right, man, I just got to cut it. I got to cut it, start over. And so we're going to start over and I'm going to try to do it a little bit faster here we go, folks. Welcome in. Welcome into the Christmas Eve holiday edition of Carolina Panthers preview. Folks, if you follow the show, one, thank you. But one thing I'll highlight is this week and for the rest of the previews, I'm still doing the same thing. Like I'm not doing the whole segment breakdown. Those are in the post game. I will be traveling. So as far as like the post game reaction to this episode, it'll either come late next week like Thursday, Friday, maybe even Saturday, and I'll probably merge it with the Jacksonville preview, or I'll do an audio only version, but that's not going to be, you know, top priority for me as, you know, we're traveling, spending time with family. We got a big game, big game for me personally, for multiple reasons. If you follow the show, you know why. One of them being my dad, Green Bay Packers fan, been a Green Bay fan his whole life, or at least as long as I've known him, what, 31 years. I remember when he, he told me a story about uh, when the Panthers were founded, he lived here, of course, and they uh, my mom went out and bought him like a brand new Panthers jacket or pullover or something. I don't know what it was. And he's like, what is this? Like, that's not my team. And I'm not, I'm not going to pull for them. So he's giving me a hard time year after year. He watched the game last week, said he was thinking about me guessing the, the misery of what that was i can't make this stuff up folks i was at the grocery store today in the parking lot and i should probably promote myself in the show more but i'm not that kind of person like i'm not a very outgoing person to come up and tell you hey man yeah you should go like and follow my show i was in music years and years and years ago and like had to go through that hustling grind and maybe i'll get there maybe i will just like you know get comfortable but I heard a conversation talking about the ticket prices. And of course, you know, we're out here in Leland, Wilmington, North Carolina. And it was funny. I almost interjected like, yeah, I talked about that on the show. I know exactly what you guys are talking about when I heard them bring it up, but I didn't. You got that element. You have the element that this was my team growing up, up until, you know, like what the mid to late 2000s, I guess even 2010s followed really Brett Favre as, as I grew up. And so went went along for the ride there. Mom was a big Panthers fan and I watched him growing up, like I said, and I'm not going to go into the details here, but you've got that element for me. Always, always keep pounding now. And then we have a family friend. My wife's best friend's husband is a diehard Packers fan, Caleb. So shout out to Caleb. So it's one of those, this is like bragging rights. You know, last year we had Panthers, Ravens, with me and Nolan and I was, you know, giving him smack talk all week and it didn't, it didn't work out. I knew that wasn't going to work out, but I got this one. He's, he's ready for Panthers and Ravens whenever they play again. We're going to have him on the show, folks. I am going to bring him on because the Panthers aren't in the playoffs. So once the playoffs start here, what January, I'm going to bring Nolan on to talk about the Ravens. Cause that's, that's the way the show is going to go. All right, let's get into this though. Let's talk about the game. Green Bay Packers coming in with two losses in a row. And I had their schedule pulled up, and of course I just closed it out. So let me pull it back up very quickly. It's coming in six and eight. They lost two in a row. They've lost 
t- to Tampa Bay and Baker Mayfield, who was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Also, shout out to Eddie Pinheiro, NFC Special Teams Player of the Week. I joked that he should get the award when this came, like earlier in the week, there was a guy tweeting with me and I was like, it's either going to be Eddie or Camus with the kickoffs. <laughs> Joking. And sure enough, he tags me in today. I was like, oh yeah, it was actually Eddie. Eddie got the award. Shout out to him. Vote for Eddie on the Pro Bowl. Vote for Eddie or for De- Derek Brown on the Pro Bowl as well, folks. Let's get a Panther or two to the Pro Bowl. They're not going to have anything else to do. So let's do it. But Green Bay lost to Tampa Bay and they've lost to the Giants. So they're six and eight trying to stay in contention for the playoffs with three games to go left in the season. Very winnable game for them to, to come in here. Like we know the, the fan base with Christmas Eve one and with just the state of this organization and team, things aren't going to be looking great in Charlotte with Carol, you know, whatever blue you want to call it, it's going to be there. process blue. So I expect a pretty decent, you know, cheesehead crowd coming in to bank of America stadium. And let's talk about this really quickly. There are some posts floating around online comparing the 2015 NFC Championship game to the last weekend here in the Carolinas with a monsoon and a 2-12, and at the time 1-12 and football team. Cut the crap, man. Like, I am all for y'all getting upset about whatever it is. But since the start of this team, like, We've always had opposing fans here. Now, last week, weather, you're a bad team, pouring rain, doesn't spell for a good recipe. And I'm not going to sit here and say, like, yeah, there were so many people and fans in attendance. I talked about the attendance last week and, like, yeah, the, the, the numbers weren't there. But don't go out here trying to compare it. My my wife and I went to that game, the, the championship, NFC championship. You cannot compare that atmosphere and what was there to go to the Super Bowl with a team that's won two games. It's not the same, folks. Yes, the the stadium and the city and the fans are going to be more supportive when the team is doing well than when they're not. And that's the state of where we are. But when we talk about Green Bay, Green Bay has had kind of a, a bumpy road. Started off 1-0, and 2-2, and 2-4, and four, got to 3-6, and six, and then they won three games in a row against some pretty good teams. Chargers, which we know Chargers have kind of fallen apart. Detroit, good football team, playoff team, Kansas City Chiefs. I remember when they beat Kansas City, I think it was Sunday night football. I texted Caleb and I was like, man, what a win. Very, very big win for them at the time. Got them to 500. And then they've plummeted these last two games, last two games. It's a winnable game, like I said, for them to come in here and to keep their playoff hopes alive. Now, Atlanta, same situation. Atlanta's playoff hopes coming into this game last week that was the the thing like hey we've got a chance to beat a really bad football team keep our playoff hopes alive and get this thing rolling but they didn't let's talk about the two teams it is mind-blowing to me and i have to pull up my saved tweets because this is one that i i went back and looked at and i was like i've got to just talk about this Because at first I said, I don't know that we've ever seen anything like this before. Like the 2023 Panthers. The Panthers currently have the third best defense in terms of yards allowed. Third best in the league. Sounds like, how has that looked over the last five seasons with the other teams with worst records or with the worst record in the league? So 2022, the Bears had the 29th worst defense in yards allowed. 2021, Jacksonville was 20th. 2020, Jacksonville was 31st. 2019, the Bengals were 29th. In 2018, the Cardinals were 20th. So the the highest we've seen is 20th. Now to the flip side, giving up a lot of points, a lot of points that are points off of turnovers, field position, all the things that I've said multiple times on this show. But when we kind of, and I'm going to etch this out into another episode, but talk about Head coaching candidates, I still believe Ijero Ivero is a dark horse to get this job. He interviewed one for the head coaching job here. So Tepper must have really liked him to be able to retain him and, and get him in here. But he also interviewed at other head coaching positions. So the, the writing's on the wall. And I love just listening. If you haven't listened to him talking to his pressers, he's one that you know commands your respect. You can tell that he is someone that is going to be able to lead a team. Like there is no doubt about it 
So number three, defense, as far as yards allowed. Cannot make this stuff up, folks. We have a few big milestones closing out this season we're trying to get to. Bryce Young eclipsing or getting to 3,000 passing yards. I think he's got to average like 220-ish over the next three games to hit that mark. Chuba Hubbard trying to eclipse 1,000 yards, even with the amount of rushing attempts that he got earlier in the season or lack thereof. He's still very close to closing out on a thousand yards. And I know we got the extra game. Doesn't doesn't matter to me. There aren't many backs. I think last I looked at the last like two seasons, only 10 or 11 backs have eclipsed 10, 11, 12 backs have eclipsed a thousand yards. So he's like 269 yards away. Adam Thielen, 130 yards away from eclipsing 1,000 receiving yards on the season. So a few big milestones to track. For the team, when we talk about the team, there's not much to talk about. Not much to talk about with the Panthers and the offense that put up nine points last week, all field goals. Now, you could say in the situation where we didn't go for it and we kicked the field goal and at the end of the game that both of those situations could have been touchdowns, but they weren't. So you you take what you have on paper and we are still the worst, second worst scoring offense in Panthers franchise history, second worst. We're not putting up a ton of points. I believe it is actually under, yeah, 14.7 points per game, which is actually 29th in the league. So there's two other teams, 30, 31, 33 other teams that are worse than us. Opponent points per game, about 24.9. Numbers slowly coming down, not by much, but last week helped. We're averaging about 106 rushing yards per game. Seeing that continue to increase and Passing is about a little shy under 200. When you compare that, excuse me, to Green Bay, Green Bay puts up about 21 points per game. So if we're going to be in this game, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of scoring. There's no denying that. Defense, though, giving up 21 points as well. So pretty competitive. Um, You know, when you look at the the spread between the, the two, how many points they're scoring and how many points they're giving up. Rushing attacks pretty close, 103 yards, and then passing higher. I think everybody's going to be higher at this point, but 241 yards per game. Good old Green Bay. Now, coming into this, we've got kind of a special breakdown, so to speak. And uh, see if I could pull it up. Sorry about that. So, know your foe. If you don't follow these articles, the Panthers post them once a week, upcoming opponent. It's a very nice way for you to, to quickly get up to speed with who we're playing without having to go out, watch a lot of film, read a lot of articles. Kind of gives you a very nice breakdown. So Cassidy Hill wrote this article. Very unique perspective because she was just the writer reporter for Green Bay Packers. She's moving to Charlotte. Well, I don't know if she's moving to Charlotte, but she's coming to Carolina to write for the Carolina Panthers. And she wrote this article, like perfect timing to have her come in and write her first article. So let's get into it. Carolina Panthers, welcome in NFC North Green Bay Packers, Christmas Eve matchup, one o'clock kickoff, two and 12 versus six and eight. Whoo, quite a, quite a matchup there. Carolina is six and 11 all time versus Green Bay. So let's get, get into the nitty gritty of what she knows because she's been there and watching this. The Packers have been missing Christian Watson the past two weeks, and that's been taking away much of their deep threat ability. So without that facet of the offense, quarterback Jordan Love and company have instead turned to an intermediate passing game that is dependent on hard fault yards. You can see where I messed that up in my intro uh, after the catch. So turning on short gains and explosive plays, that's something the Panthers cannot do. We are not a team that catches the ball and gets yards after the catch. That's not the dynamic of what is on our roster. We're either going to run the ball for three or four yards or maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, throw it in the flats, maybe just maybe catch Adam Thielen coming across or throw it up on the sideline and hope that Strachan, Sullivan, Chark, Mingo, somebody is going to come down and make a play. Week to week, the face of those yards have changed. And in recent weeks, it's become a pair of rookies that are leading those efforts. So receiver 
Dontavian Wicks and Titan Tucker Craft have both been stepping up as the team around them faces a lot of injuries. They've been able to do it. Proven to carry defenders, hurdle defenders, and push them away to getting those yards. Wicks has 491 receiving yards this season. 37% of that has come after the catch. Man, Kraft, the big-bodied rookie tight end, has put up a whopping 61% of his 216 yards after catch. In the case of both pass catchers, those yards after catch are always coming after contact. And man, I can't wait till the Panthers have something like that on their roster. <laughs> Reed's Reed. So the Packers have a dynamic joystick and rookie receiver Jaden Reed. He's a playmaker who just needs the ball in his hands, and he can take it from there. So the Packers have let him do just that, employing his speed and ability to make the right read at the edge on jet sweeps, curl sweeps, and end arounds. And hey, when we talk about this Panthers offense, Amir Smith-Marset, that is something we saw this previous week. We've seen the rise of Jonathan Mingo. Hey, Jonathan Mingo is now 12th in receiving yards among rookie wide receivers. I know it's not a big step, but it's a, it's a positive step in the right direction for Jonathan Mingo and getting this offense hopefully into the next level for next year. Now we do have some news. Aaron Jones, who's recovering, recovering from an MCL injury. We have Reed being able to be, be able to be able to, excuse me, being deployed uh, while that facet has happened. Said Reed did suffer a toe injury on Sunday against Tampa Bay, which could provide a blow to an already thin Pan, uh, Packers receiving unit. Here we go. Closing it from Valentine with love. So Jordan Love is the future of the offense. And I will say, from my view, Green Bay's hit it out of the park three quarterbacks in a row. I don't think there's any question that Jordan Love is a good quarterback and is going to be a good quarterback. And Carrington Valentine is that name to know on the defense. So the rookie seventh round corner, rookie seventh round corner, seventh round. I'd love to get some talent there. Has seen ample playing time this season with Jer Alexander dealing with the back and shoulder injury. Eric Stotes is also spending much of his season on injury reserve, and Russell Douglas has been traded. So Valentine has 36 tackles, eight pass breakups, and a fumble recovery backed by a tenacious, tenaciousness that refuses to be intimidated by the number one receivers he's faced week to week in all 14 games. Like, good for him, man. Way to step up as a rookie cornerback getting into this game man you know next year i am not going to do my previews it, I, one things will change quite a bit with the format one i'm not going to predict them until i will predict the games but my prediction itself is going to come through like a real video before the game because what's happened is last week i picked the atlanta falcons to win that game not really knowing everything that was coming into town with the monsoon and like leading into it, I was like, oh, this is a prime chance for the Carolina Panthers to win this game. But like, you know what, with three, three games to go, I am going to keep, keep myself honest. I do think that the Carolina Panthers could win this game. Now, I don't have any money on the game. I think the line was showing four and a half the last I looked in favor of Green Bay. I never have money on it, but just for like sense of pride, you know, three games, it's, I almost feel like the Panthers was like, there's nothing to lose for me to pick them to win this. But it's like, how optimistic do I want to be internally? But I'm like, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm about like the Panther season, just throw it all away. It doesn't matter what I say, at the, you know, as far as I'm predicting. So I do think I am going to take – it's hard, man. It's hard. I see Green Bay coming in, putting up a good fight. Their secondary, though, kind of highlights relying on a rookie receiver. I'm going to take the Carolina Panthers, and people may get mad. I'm going to take Carolina. We're going to have to put up points, though. That's the thing. If If we are going to get there, well – rely on the run game just like we have been these past few weeks continue to do that feed Chuba Hubbard continue to utilize and get Mir Mir Smith Marset involved in the game 
and conditions are going to be a lot better for us to be able to pass the ball. So take that. Defense has been outstanding. And I think even though we aren't getting to the quarterback, that's the thing that worries me and getting sacks, getting some pressure, we're stopping the run as of late. And quarterbacks just aren't throwing it well. Like I go back and look at the list of quarterbacks. I think they're averaging like 100 something yards passing per game, even less than what Bryce has, if I can find it. Opponent rank, let's see, passing yards. I just had it. Yeah, it's it's I think like 180 ish. So that's, I I think we find a way to do this. We've got to put up points. There, like I said, so I think. Well, you say that, and you got the defense to back it up. If we can play a clean game, no turnovers, Carolina Panthers can come out victorious. Although I know this is a long shot. We got to we got to we've got to score 20. We got to score 21 at least. I'm going to say. Defense steps up. So, yeah, Carolina Panthers 21, Green Bay Packers 17. Don't hate me, Caleb. Don't hate me, Dad. Uh, Just doing it because, hey, why not? Anyways, folks, I hope you all have a great holiday, holiday season, you know, Hanukkah, Christmas, you know, everything that that you celebrate, a great new year. Um, I know I'll record before the new year. But anyways, it's been great, man. And I appreciate everyone following the show. Y'all have a good one.